Hey, thanks for stopping by today. We're going to talk about the new upcoming uh, features that they've got in Lightburn 1.5.00. It's out for public beta now if you want to go check it out. It's not fully released, but if you want to go play with some of these new features, uh, sign on to your account and you can download this uh, in beta, beta format. So let's check some of these things out. The first thing I'm going to show you that a lot of people have been waiting for is that uh, Lightburn has... Uh, guides now so you can draw uh, dry out or drag out design guides and you notice if I hover to the left hand side of these little numbers my cursor changes and now I can drag out as many guidelines as I want um, they will snap to um, other features in your design so if for some reason you have a rectangle out here and you wanted to go ahead and snap a guide to it you could either grab one of these and it'll snap to it. Or if you wanted to grab a new one, it will also snap to it. Um, deleting them is the same way. You just highlight it and hit the delete key. And um, so I think this is gonna be pretty handy. So we have uh, design guides now in Lightburn 1.5.00. New feature number two is an additional ability to put a radius on your design. So if we've got a rectangle here, you'll notice that I've got it selected and you'll notice a new little blue ball down here in the left hand, or excuse me, in the right hand corner. It may be in a different location on your machine, but in my machine, it's right here in this lower right hand corner. And uh, usually if you were gonna put a radius on a rectangle, you would come over here you would spe specify your radius amount and then you would individually select each one of your corners. In this particular case, we can do two things. We can take this blue ball, grab it, and go up, uh, which will give you a negative radius, which is great for um, uh, different types of designs. Or if you go the other way, go left, it will put a radius on all four corners at the same time. It doesn't, you can't specify a a specific amount uh, doing it this way. If you want to put radius uh, on all four corners uh, with a very specific uh, amount, you need to go over to your shape properties tab. And at that point, you can go ahead and put in your corner radius amount right here, hit enter, and it will change all four. So you have three different ways now that you can put radiuses on your designs. The old way that we have here that you do it individually or you use this little blue ball and you can either you uh, put a minus or a ne uh, negative, uh, negative or a positive radius on your design, or you can come over here to your uh, shape properties tab and input that number if you need a very specific radius. Another great feature in Lightburn. The next feature we're going to talk about, feature number three, is where they've added, I'm going to go to my library, my material library here, I'm going to drag it out just so you can see it a little bit better. And so on our material library, you'll notice they have a new merge button here. This is really a great enhancement because if you have two different um, libraries that you want to put together, you don't have to do it manually anymore. You can just go ahead and select the merge button, select the one that you want to uh, add and what will happen is everything that's in green will be existing um, and uh, so you have a bunch of selections down here so you can replace mine with a new one um, rename the new one keep the original rename the original and so the nice thing about it is if you wanted to generate a merged uh, library and keep your old one the way it was, you have the ability to do that. And I really think this is a great feature because uh, in some cases, um, you you know, there would be an ability to, that you'd want to go ahead and merge a couple of different ones. Or maybe you got uh, a library from somebody else and you wanted to incorporate it into yours. This is a great tool to be able to do that. So go ahead and play with this. See what you think. The next enhancement I wanted to talk about is the taper warp feature. And what this is designed to do is to compensate for a taper on a, like a tumbler or something like that. But there's a few things that I want to caution you about on this. I played with this 
some. And <clears throat> where it lives is right up here under Laser Tools, Taper Warp. And you'll notice here that uh, you have options to whether your uh, the warp is from the top to the left to the right. Typically, you're going to want to use it in the top configuration. And these inputs are going to be always in millimeters. Regardless, mm -hmm. if you have your uh, light burn in inches or millimeters, it appears that when you go to the taper warp feature, these need to be input by, uh, with millimeters. And so the way this works is you're going to input the top uh, diameter of your tumbler, uh, the length of, the, of your tumbler as far as the engraving area, and then the bottom part of your engraving area. And based on that, it's going to skew your uh, graphic sum. What I've found is that when you're talking round graphics, um, it doesn't quite do enough to make it look like it should. And one of the things I just wanted to point out is they show a round graphic on here. And so just uh, be careful there. It's probably not going to give you as much width as you need. I did a bunch of different tumblers. Uh, with different settings and what I find out I'll put up a picture here so you can kind of see the difference between the two but what I found when I was playing with this if you've got a round graphic you can't just put in your information here and expect it to do enough to where it looks round when you're putting it on a tumbler what I found works best uh, on round graphics especially is if you come up here and you add your 10% width wise and remember this is all just an optical illusion it's not that light burns not doing what it's supposed to it's uh, it's tricking the eye when you're putting a round object on us on a cylinder and so what we found over time is usually if you increase the width of this graphic by 10% and so what we would do, you can see that this is a round graphic at this point. If I make sure that my uh, lock is unlocked and I come up here and just add 110% and hit tab, now it stretches it horizontally by 10%. And then what I'm going to do is come in to my taper warp and put in my information here. And that seems to do a real good job. Um, but just to put in this information without that 10% stretch horizontally on, on a round logo or a round object that you're planning on engraving on a tumbler, you're going to, you're going to uh, look and see that it's not quite what it should be. So let me pull up a picture and we'll talk about it here in just a minute. So let's take a look at these three uh, tumblers that I did. And starting on the left-hand side, the red tumbler, this was absolutely no compensation at all. And I realize that it's kind of weird looking at it from, from one angle, but you'll get the idea here in a minute. This is uh, not any compensation whatsoever. This is just that round logo printed out with zero width compensation or anything like that. And you can tell that it looks pinched. And uh, so typically that's why um, you've got to add some horizontal width to it to make it look round. This one here uh, on the black has just got the taper warp compensation, no additional width, just whatever the, uh, the numbers were for the diameter of the top, the length of the engraving area, and the diameter of the bottom. And you can see that it still looks uh, somewhat pinched. Compared to the teal colored one, what I did there is I stretched it 10%, then I apply, uh, applied the uh, taper warp compensation settings and when you look at the saw blade you can see that it really looks nice uh, nice and round it doesn't look pinched and so um, I think this taper warp feature is really going to work out well if you had anything other than a round logo I don't think you have to do this but in in case of round logos just be careful on only using the taper warp feature Okay, the next one is going to be uh, an addition in your uh, rectangular array tool. And this is going to be pretty uh, handy just because if you create a lot of ornaments 
or anything with a, uh, round arrays, this will save you a ton of time just because it's going to uh, group all of your duplicated uh, arrays at once. So if, if we go ahead and we uh, use the rectangular, or excuse me, the, the circular array tool over here, if I select this one, and then I hold the shift key down and I hold this one. And what we're saying is I want this shape to be wrapped around this shape. If I go to my circular array tool, it's going to wrap one shape around the other. And then I can go ahead and, you know, adjust however many I want. But the beautiful thing about this now is there's a new uh, radio button right here that says group results. So if I turn that on and then I say OK, it will automatically group that. So now if I select that, I can go ahead and move that. And you notice that it didn't group the, uh, the initial one. So it's grouping just what's being added, which is great because a lot of times you get some real intricate designs when you're doing things like this or when you're doing ornaments. Um, it can take you a, long, a lot of time to kind of pick and choose what you want grouped. And this just makes it easy. Turn on the radio button, select OK, and all of those objects are grouped. Next, we have an enhancement to the material test generator, uh, which is great. You don't have to manually create a cut line anymore. Uh, they've added a little button right here, so you'll have your ability to edit your material settings here, your, edit, your text edit settings here, and your material settings. So now, if you preview it, you will notice that there is a cutout line. So you don't have to add your own cutout line, um, which is nice. That's just one less thing you've got to worry about and do manually. So another great enhancement to the material test card feature. Um, so all you've got to do is open up here, put in your cut parameters based on the material that you're using, and away you go. Hey, well, as you can see, there's a bunch of new uh, light burn enhancements and features to version 1.5.00. Looking forward to it. Like I said, it is uh, in a, bu a public beta. You can go download it now if you want. You have to sign into your account, I believe. Um, but uh, yeah, as uh, as always, Lightburn's kicking it, kicking it up just a little bit all the time. Sure appreciate it, Lightburn. Um, if you like the content, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd sure appreciate it if you do so. Until next time, thanks and have a great day.